Hello everyone, I'm Yi Zhi Huang from Tsinghua University. It is my pleasure to introduce our recent results at QCrit this year. And the title of my poster is Stream Privacy Amplification for Quantum Cryptography. First, I would like to thank all my collaborators, including my colleague Xin Jian Zhao and my supervisor Xiong Feng Ma. As we all know, privacy amplification is one of the key steps to guarantee the security of quantum communication, especially quantum key distribution. A typical quantum key distribution session must include a privacy amplification step to remove possible information leakage in the key bits. One of the explanations of the effect of the privacy implication comes from Locho and the show Preskill's security proof of QKD based on quantum error correction. In 1999, Low and Shaw proposed that the QKD security could be guaranteed by introducing ancillary EPR pairs to carry out quantum bit error correction and quantum phase error correction. Later, in 2000, Show and Preskill further used the commutation property of measurement and the quantum error correction operations to transform quantum bit error correction into information reconciliation. Meanwhile, they also transformed the quantum phase error correction into privacy implication by introducing joint measurements. In this way, the post-processing of quantum key distribution becomes what we are now familiar with. However, this way of doing privacy amplification also has some disadvantages. For example, because this kind of privacy amplification is achieved by matrix multiplication, it needs to accumulate enough data because before it can be processed. And in practice, this data size is often very large for efficiency. Also, if there is any leftover error after information reconciliation, it will spread to the whole key string after privacy implication. That's also why we have to do information reconciliation first. In order to avoid these problems, we propose a stream privacy amplification method inspired by the idea of stream cipher in classical cryptography. The biggest problem in transforming quantum phase error correction is that the final measurements do not commute with the hardware gates. Then, besides combining them with the measurements like the show Preskill's security proof, can we combine the hardware gates with other operations? We notice that the quantum hashing operation in error correction is mainly composed of a number of C0 gates which can be combined with hardware gates as well to switch the control bits with the target qubits. With this combination, we can eliminate hardware gates on all cube data qubits, although there are still hardware gates on the ancillary qubits at this time. They and their related operations do not affect the final measurement results, so we directly move them, remove them. Finally, we can move the measurement operations to the beginning of the quantum phase error correction to obtain a new classical privacy amplification approach, which we call stream privacy amplification. The process of stream privacy amplification is similar to that of stream cipher. Firstly, some bits are selected from the key pool as seeds and generating a reusable hashing matrix. Then a stew random number string is obtained by multiplying multiplying these two parts. And finally, we, the users XOR the two random numbers strings with the reconciled key bit by bit to get the final key. Intuitively, the aim of conventional block privacy amplification is to eliminate the leaked information part by shortening the reconciled key string using hashing operations. While the aim of the string privacy amplification is trying to add the randomness in the seed to the leaked part of the reconciled key. As a result, both of them can ensure that there is no information leakage in the final key string. At the same time, string privacy amplification has some advantages that conventional privacy amplification does not have. First of all, string privacy amplification deals with reconciled key bit by bit, so there is no need to accumulate data. Also, it can output the final key bits in a stream way. In addition, only XOR operations are carried out on the reconciled key bits, so stream privacy application will not spread the errors of the input bit stream. As a result, information 
reconciliation can also be carried out before stream price inflation, which will increase the flexibility of data post-processing. Finally, the new method can also save the storage and real-time computational cost. As for potential applications, stream private application can be directly applied to most QKD schemes, such as BB84, 6 state, and so on. It can also be directly applied to quantum random number generation and ob obtain stream randomness extraction. At this point, we also carried out a numerical experiment using the conventional block scheme and the scheme sch stream scheme to extract 104.8 megabit random number from 131 megabit raw data, respectively. The results show that the block scheme takes about 340 seconds, while the stream scheme takes less than 0 0.3. 3 4 second in a real time post processing. The stream private implication can also be combined with the delayed private implication to lower the reliability requirements for relays. In addition to the above results, there are many other interesting directions and extensions to explore in the future. I hope our results can inspire further discussions, no techniques, and deeper understanding of security in cryptography. Thanks.